Grade 7 math number 12.2a, calculating experimental probability. We're going to do a real quick review of the terms so that you don't get lost, because I know these are new to you. A trial is each observation of an experiment. So every time we watch it, it's a trial. An outcome is the result of that trial. An event is a set of one or more outcomes. Probability is the likelihood that an event will happen. A sample space is a set of all the possible outcomes of an event. And a complement is all the outcomes that are not included in the event. It's the opposite of the outcome. All right? So we're going to add experimental probability to this. We can use experimental probability to approximate the probability of an event. We can figure out the chances that an event will happen. An experimental probability of an event is found by comparing the number of how many times the event occurs to the total number of trials. So we find it by comparing how many times the event happened to the total number of times we tried to make it happen. When there's only one outcome for an event, it's called a simple event. Experimental probability is the number of times the event happens over the total number of trials, okay, as a fraction. So tossing a coin to try to get heads would be a simple event, okay? So we can toss a coin to demonstrate experimental probability. We'll toss it 20 times. And the outcome is either heads or tails, and the number of times I flipped it is on this side. I got heads 9 times and tails 11 times. The 9 plus 11 is 20. That was the 20 times I flipped it. I tossed it. The outcome seems as likely as not likely, right? It's about 50-50 that it'll either land on heads or tails. And we can make a prediction on the outcome of more trials. So since it landed on heads 9 times and tails 11 times, that's 9 out of 20 times, and that's 11 out of 20 times. So the sum of the probabilities is 9 and 11 is 20. It's 20 over 20. And remember, when the numerator and denominator are the same, it equals 1, OK? So the sum of the probabilities is 1. So I got my trusty spinner here, if you remember this from last year, from sixth grade. And the spinner has a probability of pointing to one of three different colors. And I spun it 40 times. Yes, as I was drawing this board, I spun that 40 times. And if you look, yellow is not quite half, is it? It's almost half, but it's not quite half, okay? If this was the 50% mark, that would be like 46 or something, right? It's not quite and then green, green looks like it's maybe a fifth or a sixth of it. And then the red one is like almost one third, isn't it? So what do you think would happen? Well, of course, we can see that yellow won more times. See, it landed on yellow 20 times. It landed on red 15 times. And it landed on the green five times. Are you surprised? Well, because of the size of them, it kind of makes sense that that happened, didn't it? So... Here's our colors, red, yellow, red, and green, and our experimental probability. The frequency of it landing on that one, on yellow it was 20, and the number of trials was 40, so 20 over 40 is approximately a half. Now I'll explain why it says approximately. The red one, it landed on 15 times, that was the frequency, and the number of trials is 40, so that's approximately 3 eighths of the time, see? Because 5 goes into that 3 times, and 5 goes into that 8 times, so it makes it 3 eighths. All right, so green, the frequency over the number of trials, was 5 over 40, or 1 eighth. So experimental probability is based on events that have already happened. And because it can and will have any number of different outcomes, we use that approximation symbol. Because it's only an estimate, okay? So if I did this again, it wouldn't be exactly this, would it? It might be 18 over 40, and this might be, you know, 14, and it might land on green more. We don't know. So if I kept doing it, I could have slightly different outcomes. So we put approximately. 
So two different ways to find the experimental probability it won't land on yellow would have been to add the frequencies for the red and green ones, then find the ratio of the sum of the total of the trials. So 15 plus 5, the 15 plus the 5 over the 40 would have been 20 over 40. See? Then we would have known how much it won't land on yellow. We also could have used the complement by subtracting the probability that it landed on yellow from 1. So 40 over 40 is 1, because the numerator and denominator are the same. So we subtract the 20 over 40 that it did land on yellow, and we get 20 over 40 that it wouldn't. See? Half. So by if we use the complement, okay, the complement is the opposite of what did happen, right? The complement is the chance of it not landing on yellow, okay? It's the chance of it landing on red or green. So if you remember that from before, it's all the, in, the outcomes that are not included in the event, the opposite. So if we're looking for yellow, it would have been the red and green, okay? All right. Gosh, I hope I explained this well enough. Um, we're going to talk about making predictions with experimental probability. And uh, if you are confused at all, in my uh, sixth grade math list, I've got experimental probability. Okay? And you can see a couple of videos in there, all right? In the playlist for sixth grade. I'll see you next video. Bye.